I'm Saturday hauling for you guys today and I'm going to go ahead and start off with some Black Friday repurchases because the sales were so good this year even though I just stocked up on some of these during the Sephora VIB sale. The sale was just really really good. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so Belief was doing buy one get one free on their website. So I got two of the True Cream Moisturizing Balms which I continually repurchase and it's my every night moisturizer so I top it over after I do all my treatments and essences and stuff like that this goes on very last in my skin regimen and I got the big tubs too the 3.3 fluid ounce uh, jars of this and it was buy one get one free so really really good deal had I known they were doing that I would have just waited <laughs> instead of buying them during the uh, Sephora VIB sale and these ones have a really cute little uh sticker on the top of them too and then this is also a Korean skincare brand I'm sure you guys have heard me mention this time and time again but just a really good sale and I couldn't pass it up so I might actually have enough probably not I'll probably need to get like one or two more um it'll it'll last me well into the summer I think so just a lovely moisturizer from belief and I couldn't again pass that deal up so I got two more of those and then I also got two more of the Josie Marin um SPF uh, 47s the original version I hauled two more of these a couple weeks back and again the sale was really good so I got two more this is my every morning sunscreen moisturizer right here these are the two fluid ounce glass bottles um, again just a really good deal on this one here and another product I've been using for years and years and then um, these I believe are made in the US yeah they're made in the US and it does say on the packaging when these expire too which I also really appreciate so these are 2025 20, which I will use them up well before that also from Josie Marin I decided to go ahead and get um, the Josie Marin Argan creamy concealer crayon and I had purchased this um, and had it in my collection years ago and I decluttered it and I wanted to try it again. I just really like the idea of having like skin nourishing ingredients, especially in concealers and products that I put around my eyes. And again, this is the Fair One shade. It is a stick concealer. There's a total of 0.1 ounces of product in here. And this is also made in the USA. So this is the crayon. Um, the formula it doesn't it doesn't blend out as seamlessly as I would like and so I've been kind of mixing it with other concealers that I really like to kind of get the ingredients out of this it has a a light to medium slightly buildable coverage I think that if you try to build it too much then it it looks it doesn't look as seamless <laughs> um, and then to the fair shade is just not fair enough so I've worn this by itself um, I like it better blended with a lighter concealer in a range that I like to get the ingredients out of this with the more blendability and the lighter I can lighten this up with other concealers um, but it's not my favorite so that would be why I decluttered it <laughs> but I really like I just want these ingredients around my eyes so I just wanted to try it again um, to see if there was you know I was missing something or whatever but I think you can even see if my camera focuses well enough it just doesn't blend quite as seamless and it does it's too dark for the fair lightest fair shade um it's just a little bit too dark for me and maybe that's part of the issue if I had a, a shade that was a little bit more you know closer to my skin type I might be able to get it more seamlessly blended than you know it being a little bit too deep but anyway I wanted to try it again and then I placed another order on the Lisa Eldridge website because I couldn't help myself I needed to get the rest of her new eyeshadow palettes and then I also got another one of her luxuriously lucent lip colors um, I would say out of the formulas I've tried, I've got four of her lipsticks now, that the Luxuriously Lucent is my favorite. So I picked up the shade Dance Card, uh, 0.12 ounces of product in this guy, and it is made in Italy, and it's the lip color that I've got on my lips today. And they're like, um, they're like bright lip shades that are like extremely wearable. So I've actually got, <laughs> I think I've got four of these lipsticks back in my cart on her website. I just haven't I haven't hit the button yet <laughs> but I'm very tempted to because like they, they look kind of intimidating um, when you look at the bullet like it's bright and stuff but they're so wearable it's very they're very pleasant lipsticks so anyway this is dance card the packaging has got a pretty nice weight to it and it's a magnetic closure and it's got the Lisa Eldridge emblem on the top and it, it almost looks like I have a gloss on but I do not and I've got it on with uh, Too Faced Badass Lip Liner, which is just one of my favorite lip liners. It goes in so many different directions, which just makes it super easy to use. And the formula is really nice on that. So 
Um, I actually ordered some of those off of the Too Faced website too because I'm on my last backup, but I'm trying to put this on and talk at the same time. Just so you guys can see, I've had this on for about two hours and I'm just now reapplying it, but such a beautiful color. And I'll go ahead and swatch it and then I'll also swatch it against the other four lip colors that I have. Just to, you know, it might be helpful for reference purposes. So this is uh, the shade Dance card right there in the Luxuriously Lucent. And then last week I hauled uh, Rosy Shell which is absolutely beautiful. It's more pink where the this one here is more coral, the dance card. Both just beautifully easy uh, corals and pinks to wear. So that one is Rosy Shell in the Luxuriously Lucent formula as well. And then I've got Velvet Intrigue, which is one of her velvet mattes. This ended up being uh, quite a bit darker than I thought it was going to be. Still a really pretty color. And her... Um, her velvet formula is a very comfortable like silicone based matte lipstick and it looks really pretty too but that's it's just again it's a little bit deeper than something that I wear on the day to day so that's kind of why I don't wear it as often and then I think Go Lightly um, was a limited edition one this is actually the first one that I purchased and it's in her luxuriously lucent as well and that one's just kind of a little bit more it's like a brighter tangerine coral pink shade it's stunning i wish this would come back in because it's so pretty in the uh, summertime but uh there's go lightly dance card rosy shell and then this one what i say was uh velvet uh velvet intrigue right there so those are the four lisa elders lipsticks that i now have and i know i'm going to end up picking up more of the luxuriously lucent formula just again it's just such a pretty lipstick. And then I got the other three six pan eyeshadow palettes that I didn't originally order. And so these guys have got a total of 0.19 ounces of product across six shades. This is the box packaging on them. And these guys are made in Italy. So I've got Muse, Cinnabar, and Sorcery. I'll start off with Muse. And I did notice that on the back of mine it says Velvet metallic velvet in the little uh, screen packaging or the screen sticker on the back there but my center shade is a velvet and the metallic is over here so they put them in the wrong spot and so I was going to switch them out but I wanted to kind of I don't know for whatever reason show that to you um, maybe in case you were wondering as well but when I did pull it out because these shadows are magnetized inside this packaging which I love that aspect um, the names are not on the back so I was kind of sad about that because you know they do sell refills and these are like um, palettes that you can mix and match and play around with or customize you know if you, especially if you have like all of them pull a shade out and put a different one in and stuff like that and I would have really appreciated to have a sticker on the back of these with the names, especially for that price tag. <laughs> so just an FYI, they are not on the back of the packaging and mine is not laid out uh, properly. Either the sticker's wrong or the layout was wrong. I'm not sure, but this is the metallic over here. And then these two are the velvet shades. And then this one right here is a velvet. And then we have got a luster right here and a luminous right here. On, or unless this one's the luminous and this one's the luster but this one actually is a very similar formula to the metallic these two the formulation of these two shades is very similar so sometimes the finishes on these kind of confuse me because I'm like the luminous is very similar to the metallic and then too I want to make mention she's got two, the seamless mattes and then the velvets which um None of the shades in any of these five palettes to me are solid like matte, like you're a matte, matte eyeshadow. There's something about them that have got a bit of luminosity to them. They don't have any visible sparkles or particles of shine in them, but they're not a flat matte eyeshadow, which probably leads it to be extra blendable. But I kind of wish that there was a couple of, you know, really flat mattes in some of these palettes. So anyway, just a little, I kind of touched on that in my video from last week as well and I think I'll swatch those two palettes against these so that we have them kind of all together but um this one right here is Muse there are little um holes so that you can pop the shadows out I just use a magnet to pull them out because they do come out then this is what your packaging looks like the bottom part has got a nice weight to it but it's not really really heavy um like some you know really high-end brands can have like super heavy packaging it's kind of somewhere in the middle so let's go ahead and give you guys some swatches of Muse this one is a standalone palette for me um these formulas have got a bit of a creaminess to them and i think that's because of the silicone ingredients in them and some of them 
can get a little bit harder to pick up on a brush, especially if it, like those velvets and those seamless mattes, they wanna kind of grab onto each other. Like the product wants to gather itself a little bit. And then these two right here. So this is Muse right here. And then here is Cinnabar. And I've worn this by itself, but when I did, I wish for something that was brighter for the inner portion of my lid and underneath the brow. Um, you can use it by itself, obviously, but I was wishing for something that was a little bit bright. So I might want to, you know, switch around some of the shades and stuff like that. But we'll swatch Cinnabar. We've got a seamless matte, a metallic, a seamless matte, a metallic right here. And then we have got a velvet, and then this shade is a top coat, which those top coat shades, and then also that, uh, what was that other shade in this palette I called? It was a luminous, I think. Um, those can be a little bit hard to pick up on a brush too. <laughs> so this one right here is a cinnabar right there. And then the last one is Sorcery, which I can't believe I didn't pick up this one with my initial order. I was just trying to do two and like keep it condensed and then of course I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so Sorcery is actually the palette that I've got on my eyes today. And initially this wasn't super standalone for me, but today, because um, I've worn this a couple times today, I wanted to just use the shades in here and see kind of how it looked. And I do really like um, how the look came out. It's kind of a little bit more of a, a grungy uh, blue-green look, which is, I think, really pretty on. Um, there's only one seamless matte in here. Everything else is quite shimmery or shiny. So this is your seamless matte. And you can see right there, I did have to kind of dig into that guy to pick up some product. And I've got it in the crease. And then I blended it out with the metallic right here in, what is that the, yeah, Swan Song. I've got every single shade in this palette on my eyes. I, I use these two shades to blend out. I've got this one all over the lid, and then I got this one right here underneath the brow. So we've got Seamless Matte, Grotto, which is a metallic, um, Madrigal, which is a metallic, Mercurial, which is a luminous duo. And this is another one um, you kind of have to push your brush in there to pick up, pick it up and then put it directly over a tacky primer or base. Because if you want those little sparkles to really stick, you're going to need to do that. Because it is, um, it needs something to grab onto to get the best shine out of it. And then we've got Modge or Mage, which is a metallic, and Swan Song, which is a metallic. So that one is Sorcery, and I love the look that came out of it today. I've worn this a couple times. I'll go ahead and swatch the other two palettes that I have as well, just so you can see them all together. So this is Vega. I hauled this one last week. But I just want you guys to see the swatches all together. And Vega has got some cool tones, so it might look nice swatching it kind of near uh, Sorcery. I'm going to run out of room. Good one, um, Tara. And then these two. So these six right here, that's Vega right there. And you can see it next to Sorcery. And then here is Myth. And just kind of grabbing these to swatch them right now because I have them all right here. I can say I wish there was some type of differentiation with that packaging. <laughs> Unless I tip them all over. Um, because they all look the same. So I'm probably going to just depot all of these and put them in a great big magnetic palette, um, a see-through one. So the fifth one is Myth right here. Swatch this one. This one I really got hard pan on, and this one as well. Granted, this is the one that I have worn the most out of the five, but those two in particular I really um, had been getting the hard pan on. Um, And 
and then these last two here. So there is Myth right there. This one is Vega. Then you've got Sorcery, um, Cinnabar, and Muse. I'm trying to, I just really want you guys to be, try to see all of the shades together. Um, I would say if I were to kind of rank them, the one my favorite ones are Sorcery, Muse, and Vega. Like, I, those are my favorite. I love the, absolutely love the looks that I get out of it. I love the depth from Cinnabar, but there isn't one light enough for me. And the, then the one palette that I don't want to say I was disappointed by, but I was the least excited by the look that came out of it. It was just very um, kind of run-of-the-mill and boring to me is Muse. <laughs> this one right here, it was, I mean, it was soft and it was pretty. And if you like kind of pinky, warm, um, neutral shades that are really easy to work with, but also kind of um, subtle. I think you would really love this uh, palette. The formulas are really easy to work with once you, once you're able to pick some of those more difficult ones up on a brush. Um, but this one here was just really anticlimactic for me. <laughs> so anyway, again, I'll just show you guys the swatches again. If you guys were thinking about um, some of these uh, palettes here. And I'm glad that I bought them all because they're magnetized and I can pull them out all out. So while the Muse one wasn't like my favorite, I can see myself really enjoying some shades in the Muse palette paired with some of those other palettes, you know. So it's going to be really fun when I put them all in a magnetic palette and see all the shades kind of together and then dip between all of them when I do a look. So. And then I placed an order on the Glamlight website. They were doing a really, really good sale. I want to say it was 40% off the entire website. So I had had my eye on a bunch of pieces from the Scooby-Doo collection. And then I got um, a bunch of my favorite eyelashes and then another palette. So I'll start off with the Scooby-Doo. So I got the highlighter. Um, there's 0.21 ounces of product and this is a duo. And this guy here is made in China. Can we just with the packaging? It is just very, very cute packaging on this whole collection. And then the palette has got a like switchable front on it, which is just really cute. And it's a cardboard with a magnetic closure as well. And I have got the highlighter on the bottom on my cheeks. It's a very sparkly, very shiny um, green kind of, is there gold in there? Not really, yeah, it's like golden green sheen to it. And I absolutely love the highlighters in this. The top one's a, a pinky duochrome. So let me swatch them. I did use um, a ColourPop Super Shock kind of as a base for the um, highlighter in these just to get them really intense. And that's kind of been my favorite way to use them. I've used it by itself too, but I love the intensity that it brings layering it over something tacky, especially on my drier skin type. So there were, oh, you can still kind of see them, the bats in those two highlighters. Um, I placed another order with Glamlight for their uh, Strawberry Shortcake palette, and I kind of wish, you guys, I kind of wish I would have bought a backup of this, and I'm trying to not do stuff like that, but <laughs> I think that they're so pretty. Um, the green one's a little bit more sparkly than the pink one, but they're both very, very stunning, and when you pair this highlighter palette with um, the eye looks from the eyeshadow palettes. I just adore the look. I wore this in one of the eyeshadow palettes on my birthday and ugh, it was hard to wash off. One of those looks where you don't want to wash it off type of a situation. So anyway, that is the highlighter palette and it's really, really pretty. If you don't like high shine and like visible sparkles or anything like that, you probably won't like that though. It's very in your face, very shiny, sparkly highlighter. And then um, we've got the Scooby-Doo Rut Row Raggy 10 Shade Palette. So this has got 0.52 ounces of product or 15 grams. This is also made in China. And the packaging on this is also very, very cute. Now, neither of the Scooby-Doo eyeshadow palettes are standalone for me. So I did use the highlighter palette to brighten up. Um, the looks that I did with both of the eyeshadow palettes. And I really liked that combination because the highlighters are both light enough for that um, inner portion underneath the brow and the tones all coincide with the shadows in each palette. So I was able to make those work. But there's a little numbered sleeve in there, which I don't ever use those. And then the top row are all really shiny kind of uh, metallics and then the bottom row are matte. And I get along with the Glamlight formula really well. 
they're pigmented, they blend really well. Like, those are so pretty, right? And then this next one. And then these last two shades. Really, really pretty palette. I was kind of wishing I had these for around Halloween, but um, these are the type of tones. I'll wear those all year round. I just kind of don't care, but they are really fun kind of Halloween colors for sure. So that one is the um, Rut Row Raggy <laughs> um, 10 pan palette right there. And then the other one is the Creeps and Crawls 10 shade palette, 0.52 ounces again and 15 grams. And this is what the packaging on this one looks like. It's a cardboard again with a magnetic closure. And then same thing, the top row are all really shiny metallics and the bottom row are all matte. So everything in here, mid-tone are, are pretty deep. So incorporating the highlighting palette with both of these palettes yielded really, really pretty looks. So. Right? Oh my goodness, they're like so shiny. And this guy. It's crazy, like, <laughs> like swatching this palette right after I swatched the Lisa Eldridge palettes is just such a drastic <laughs> difference and then these last two here so that one there is the uh, creeps and crawls palette and there's the rut row and then the highlighter palette right there I also got uh, 10 pairs of one of my absolute favorite eyelashes, which are the Glamlight Code Orange Eyelash. And I can get a pretty decent wear out of um, a single pair of these. And I had purchased, I wanna say, probably 20 pairs last Black Friday, and they have lasted me pretty good. I think I might have bought a couple in between, but I, I didn't use all, all of them up. I still have, I've got a back stock of these because they're my favorite eyelashes. And they were on sale on top of 40% off, so I got them at a pretty good price. And then I also got the Scooby-Doo eyelashes, and they are actually, in my opinion, the same uh, lash as the Code Orange from the Michaela collection. The packaging on the Michaela is a little bit more substantial than the Scooby-Doo, but the Scooby-Doo packaging is very, very cute. So I was worried about the Scooby-Doo ones because I bought um, the new Glamlight Michaela Pot 2 eyelashes and I went to use my eyelash curler on them and kind of crimp them and the the fibers just bent like awkwardly like they were a different fiber than the code orange lashes so I was kind of nervous about getting the Scooby-Doo ones but I'm happy to say that the materials in both of these are the same so I'm excited about that I'm not sure what went on with the Michaela Pot 2 lashes but they just they were they were they weren't very substantial <laughs> if you will but let me show you um, these two lashes together. I already trimmed the Scooby-Doo ones and I wore them So I did keep the little piece in there for whatever reason, but these here These are the code orange and Then those are the Scooby-Doo to me. They are the exact same eyelash right there So I did pick those up as well after I just talked about not getting a backup of the Scooby-Doo highlighter <laughs> I did get a backup of the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Glam Light highlighter. <laughs> so maybe I will. I don't know. It was such a good sale and I love this highlighter uh, like a super ton. It's been like one of my favorites throughout the year. So I got another one of these. It comes in like a little milk carton and then I'll show you the one that I've got in use here. But this is this has got um, 0.52 ounces of product, which is a pretty substantial amount of product. So much so that I probably didn't need the backup. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, here we are. So the actual packaging looks like a bowl of cereal. It's very, very cute. So it's got a sifter in there. And again, this is just, oh, it's such a beautiful highlighter. Um, I do like it with a little bit of a tacky base underneath, again, just to really intensify it. But in the summertime, not so much in the wintertime, in the summertime it goes on my, my skin um, pretty nicely without um, a tacky base. But my skin's pretty dry in the wintertime. Just look how beautiful that is. Yeah, okay, I'm not even mad at the fact that I picked up a backup because this is such a stunning highlighter. And it does have a bit of this creaminess to it um, that adheres to a drier skin type really well without a base. But like, again, I, if I really want to amp it up, especially in the wintertime when I've got that drier skin, I kind of use a Super Shock or either the Anastasia Beverly Hills. Well, you can see right there over my hand without anything, that's what it looks like. It's super stunning. So, yeah, I'm not mad at it. Not mad at that backup. <laughs> so that's the um, Frosted Flakes highlighter. And then I should mention, too, real quick, um, where the eyelashes are made. And on the back, it says these are both made in China, as well as the Frosted Flakes highlighter. And then lastly, from Glam Light, I got the Barbie Dream Summer Palette. I'm like the biggest... You know, Barbie Fiend or anything like that, but this packaging is really cute and I love the colors in here. They're very bright. This is another one where there's nothing in this entire palette across, uh, how many shades are in here? I think 15, no, 24 eyeshadows. Out of 24 eyeshadows, there isn't a highlight shade in here for me. <laughs> so I do gotta incorporate uh, something else in there. I've also used that Frosted Flakes highlighter as an eyeshadow too and it's beautiful like that. But anyway, this is the Barbie palette right here. So we've got, uh, it says made in China and then there is a total of 28.8 grams or one ounce of product across 24 eyeshadows. So you are getting a large amount of product you kind of get a large amount of product with all of Glam Light's stuff, in my opinion. Um, cardboard packaging with a magnetic closure. And then you've got all of these really bright shades. I've worn this one a few times. Definitely haven't worn every one. It's that same Glam Light formula that I really enjoy. Lots of mattes and lots of shimmers in here. Just none of them light enough for highlight shades for me. <laughs> And then these ones. There are some really pretty colors in here though. And these next ones. How pretty is that color? So beautiful. And then these last four. Very, very pretty colors in this palette right here. So that is the Glam Light and Barbie eyeshadow palette. The darn blush from the Strawberry Shortcake collection sold out before I placed my order and I was really sad about it. <laughs> but I also uh, got more Code Orange eyelashes with that order. <laughs> And that's everything that I got in that I purchased uh, so far from Black Friday. <laughs> a lot of stuff has kind of taken a long time to ship, which is kind of normal for the Black Friday stuff. But I did get in a couple really lovely PR packages. This first one here is from Pharmacy. They sent over their new Wake Up Honey Eye Cream. It says with brightening vitamin C, brighter eyes in minutes, uh, Pharmacy Wake Up Honey Eye Cream. So it came in 
this really cute little uh, PR package right here. So I'll kind of read, it says potent, potent actives, upcycled ingredients for clinically proven results. Vitamin C visibly brightens proprietary honey blend, hydrates and soothes. And if you don't know, um, I have mentioned uh, before that I do mix like actual honey into my skincare, especially at night. Um, I, I don't do it as much in the kind of the, the summertime, but in the wintertime, I start to incorporate like actual honey in my skincare products. So I'll take just a little tiny bit of honey and put it into my last uh, like topping of eye product. And also I'll mix it in with the Belief True Cream Moisturizing Balm. So anything that has like honey or propolis or anything like that in it, I'm always really intrigued by. Um, and I've done so I've done the honey thing for years and years. <laughs> we actually have um, honeybee boxes on uh, some acreage that we have, and so the honeybee place because they can put honeybees on our land. Um, they bring out like uh, a big jar of like organic fresh almonds and pecans and then they also bring out these uh, tubs of honey that came from like honey and the bees and stuff from out here where, where we're from so I do like to use that as well but anyway I was really excited about this again because I love honey style products on my face so it says dark circle eraser check magic wand check we've got the next best thing so this guy here, I got it, uh, I think four days ago, and I had been using it um, morning and night uh, for four days. And I've been layering it, of course, with how I do with thinner products, and then I put a thicker product over the top. And this guy here sits beautifully underneath concealer, blends out really lovely with concealer. So I do have it underneath my eyes today and topped it with um, I think I'm wearing Dior Forever Concealer today and it blended out really nice. Um, some eye creams can get really finicky when you blend concealer over the top of them. I didn't have any issues with this one. And it's really crazy because the, the formula of this is very similar to me to the, not the formula, the kind of the consistency of it, I should say. Um, and it does feel similar to me to the vitamin C eye cream from Paula's Choice that I recently got as well. And I was using that one prior to this one and now I've been using this one, but I'll continue to use both of these products. I'll probably use um, the Paula's Choice at night and then this one in the morning just because I do feel like this one um, concealer blends over this one just a little bit nicer than the Paula's Choice but they still both work really nice um, underneath makeup. So 0.5 fluid ounces of product and this is made in the USA. How cute is the jar packaging. I thought it was kind of interesting the vitamin C aspect in, in the jar, um, but I think it's like the encapsulated vitamin C so it's not supposed to break down um, like when it's exposed to air because vitamin C is like such an unstable type product. So we'll see, but the color is the same as the, the uh, Paula's Choice one as well. It's got like this kind of yellow creamy style color to it and it's very hydrating like a very very hydrating eye cream which is something that I need I I have such a dry eye area so I do layer um, again underneath like serum products underneath and stuff I've been using the NIOD fractionated eye stuff underneath this and then I top this that's what I've been using for the morning time um, but so far so good I've really been enjoying uh, this eye cream so that's the pharmacy wake up honey right there the packaging is just super super cute huge thank you to pharmacy for sending this over um long time pharmacy user here and then the brand half caked reached out to me and they asked to send me some products and i had actually heard about this brand from lauren may beauty here on youtube and she said good things about the eyeshadow palette so i was like i went to the website and i was like yeah i do want to try these products and they sent me over an absolute boatload of products and one product especially in particular I just absolutely love. So there's kind of all the empty boxes in there. Really cute kind of cake style um, packaging that the stuff comes in. Kind of bright, fun colors. They sent over a bunch of their brushes which are really soft synthetics. They have a slight texture to the bristle but not a super substantial one. So they're like extra, extra soft and smooth towards the ends. Um, and they have like a, a thicker style handle to them with a pretty decent weight. They're pretty brush to look at, that's for sure. This is one that's kind of similar in shape to the uh, BK Beauty one that I really love. Um, in comparison, uh, the BK Beauty brushes do have more texture texture at the bristle so they pick up more product easier. Um, br brushes like this that are really really soft towards the end they're good for picking up um, really pigmented uh, 
soft products because the bristles are so soft they're not going to like dig into those softer press type of formulas if that makes sense but i've been trying a bunch of these for a couple of days now and this one here i love uh the mini buffer i really like to put on eyeshadow primer with this it's almost like a finger because <laughs> it's circular all the way around but they're just really pretty ones i will say that for the most part they're quite dense and not super airy so they're gonna like which makes sense because there's quite a few cream products and these are the style of brushes you want to use with a cream product that more dense kind of firm um head to them but they are very very soft but quite dense uh brushes but seems like a pretty decent quality of course i haven't like used and abused them to find out you know exactly but i think that they're they're quite pretty so they sent over those they also sent over four of the uh cheek and lip tints and i like these better for like putting on the lips granted these are shades that i don't wear all too often but for the cheeks these are just a little bit too tacky for me i like to use a cream product um over set foundation which isn't typical but that's just that's just how i do things <laughs> let me swatch them for you guys this is what the packaging looks like um it does say that these are made in china and then there's a little mirror in there let me set these down this first one is island in the sun i think that they look much deeper than they kind of like blend out on the skin and how they look in the pan so that one is island in the sun and again i think that these look uh, better on me used as a lip tint on the lips as opposed to on my cheeks because of that kind of tacky nature um, and then we've got angel which is a really pretty pink shade this is probably my favorite one out of the four so this is angel it's a pretty kind of mid-tone rosy pink color so that one's angel and then we've got 4 a.m which is a bit of a mauve rose. So this is 4 a.m. right there. And then the last one is Wild Berry, which is a deep berry color. Looks again, this looks much darker in the pan um, than it actually goes on. So that one is Wild Berry. There are also two cream bronzers. And the cream bronzers are in the purple packaging. These are also made in China. And these to me have uh, pretty much the same formulation as the cheek products. Um, they're, you, I think you can even tell with the glisten um, how it's picking up on camera there that they've got quite a bit of tack to them as well. They just don't feel quite as, uh, they don't have as thick of a viscosity as the blush products do. And that probably ties in with it. They're also a t uh, lip and a cheek. These feel more like a lipstick formulation to me where this one, it's got that tack to it, but it's a little bit thinner um, of a viscosity. But that's a bronzer shade in Morning Dew. And then the other one is the shade Heat Waves, which is right here. So this one is heat waves. And again, this doesn't go over a set face really well, but it, it blends better, you know, when you use it right over a liquid foundation. But I typically don't use uh, products that are this tacky um, on my skin. I'm very acne prone. <laughs> so when they're this kind of thick and tacky, I don't, I don't, I prefer a product, powder product or one that's like a moussey that goes over a set foundation really well. But if you like creams, I think these ones are more suited to the skin and these ones are more suited to the lips. And then there is one pressed powder blush and this is in the shade Bunny, 0.13 ounces of product in this guy as well. And this has got a light purple plastic packaging. This is really pretty too. It's got nice pigmentation and it blends out pretty good on the skin too. I think this is the only powder blush product or shade that I've seen on the website. So that is uh, Bunny right there for the blush. I'm kind of trying to swatch all the cheek products together so that you can see them, all the tones and stuff. Um, and then they sent over five of these in sync liquid blushes. Now these are what I've been obsessed with. I've actually worn um, one of these in my last video and I had got some questions because I didn't list it in the description box, but I was wearing Maybe Baby in this formulation in my last video. But these here are like a, a whipped kind of moussey cream texture. So I put a little dot in the back of my hand, kind of blend it out with a finger. And then my favorite brush to put these on with because of this shape is the BK Beauty 109 brush. 
I just like pounce it on the cheeks. These go over a set foundation really well and they look just super light and airy, but just a really beautiful cheek product. I've been wearing one of these almost every single day since I've gotten them. Um, maybe Baby Delicate Drama and then New Classic, I think are the ones that I've worn the most, but I can get away with wearing all of these. They're just a really, really pretty formula. So there's a total of, it doesn't seem to say on the packaging how much product is in here. <laughs> um, these are also made in China. I can't see how much product is in here. So each one I've squeezed to about that much and got the air out. So that's kind of how much product is in there, which is a pretty decent amount of, of liquid product that you're getting, I think. So let's start off with the shade that I've got on my cheeks today. And that is the shade New Classic. Right here, so this is new classic, and this is what I've got on my cheeks today. And again, it's like a whipped, moussey type of texture. Blends out super nice on the skin, and it almost goes to like a, a more, uh, like almost like a cream to powder type of finish, but very, very seamless. I really, really like these cheek products. So that one, again, is new classic, and that is what I've got on my cheeks today and then this next one is no strings attached right here which is kind of a bronzy color I've worn this as a blush but this is probably the one that I won't get the most use out of that one's no strings attached I might like that one more kind of going into the summertime and then we've got brown sugar right here see this one's got a little bit more readiness to it so I like it as a blush a little bit more. So that one there is brown sugar. And then we have got my most worn shade. I'm obsessed with this one. This is Maybe Baby. This is the one that I was wearing in my last haul video. I love, absolutely love this blush. It's so beautiful. So that one there is Maybe Baby. It's just a really pretty baby pink color and it just really pops vibrantly on the cheeks. And then the last one is Delicate Drama. And I love this one as well. So here's Delicate Drama right here. And those are the five in sync uh, liquid blushes right there and I love them. I love that formula and how well they go over a set um, foundation is just, I just love it. it I just pounce it on like this and boom, it's blended out. Granted, this is a really great brush for that. <laughs> and then they sent over two of their totally tubular mascaras. Um, one of them is called the Heights, which is like more supposed to be more lengthening. And then the other one is the Ultimate. And I find the formula between these two mascaras to be really similar. Um, the brush is just different on them. And I actually really like the brushes because they're very firm, but they're that rubber bristle style brush so they comb through the lashes really really nice um, I do like the mascaras itself I didn't get any flaking or smudging with these so far and they're like a tubing mascara so you can actually see see the fibers in the formula um, like in comparison to the Maybelline Sky High I would I can do two coats of the Maybelline Sky High to get the volume and length and I think that of each one of these I need about three coats and it gives me that same effect and I really like it almost because of that comb being more firm it combs through the lash a little bit more so I think that's kind of why I have to go in with three coats but these are pretty nice mascaras um, this one here is the heights so that's what the brush looks like on that one you can like even like look at the little um, brush here and kind of see the fibers in it and then this is what the brush on the ultimate looks like it's got it's a little shorter and it's got a slight curve to it right there so those are the two mascaras. And then they sent over three of their liquid lips. Um, these have got 0.14 ounces of product. I can say that um, on the actual packaging, it doesn't state on a couple of these what each product is, but I know that by looking, I go back and look at them, these ones, these particular ones are the liquid lips. And I had swatched these on my hands, but I hadn't worn them. But when I tried to wipe these off, it was a whole thing. They dry down and they set and they're very like budge proof formula. Um, I, I'm somebody who just doesn't wear a ton of liquid lipsticks, but I'm going to swatch these for you guys anyways. They are very long wearing per the swatch that I did on the back of my hand. <laughs> um, this one is Cashmere right here. I do like the tones of these three that they sent over. So that one's Cashmere. And then we have got Fangirl. 
This one is Fangirl. And then the last one is Theme Song. Right here. A little bit of a terracotta. This one's got a different applicator. See that? That one's got a little bit of a different applicator in comparison to this one. This one's just a little bit longer applicator. And then they also sent over three of their lip glosses. So we've got Cake Baby right here. This one does not have any sparkles in it. I love all three of the colors, the tones of these. Very, very pretty. And these smell um, kind of like, like a sweet tart formula. When I first pulled the applicator out and smelled these, so that's just kind of what I do. <laughs> um, took me back nostalgic, very, very nostalgic smell for me. They smelled very similar to the original uh, Kat Von D lip glosses, which I still have and I crack open every once in a while just to smell because it's like a, um, a transport in my brain. It can transport me back, I don't know what, 18 years or something, well, maybe 15 years or something like that. Um, that's kind of what makeup does for me. <laughs> But anyway, when I smell those, I know like exactly where I was and what I was doing with with that particular product. I, I have several like different memories associated with it, which like smell scent memories. <laughs> anyway, these smell like that, which this is I've never smelled that that particular smell in any other product since then. So I found that interesting. Anyway, this is Cake Baby in the gloss formula. This one does not have any sparkles in it. And then these next two do have sparkles in it. So we've got Lucky Charm right here. That one is Lucky Charm. And these do have quite a bit of tack to them. And they're quite thicker. They've got a decent viscosity to it. Um, so they're a thicker kind of formulation. And then we've got Pinky Ring, which is just a really pretty kind of vibrant pink color. I want to put this on, but I'm kind of wearing like greens and like corally colors, so it might not work that well, but that one is pinky ring right there. And those are the three glosses. And then lastly from half caked air and then lastly from half caked there are two um, stick highlighters. Both of these are too deep for a highlighter on my skin tone, but one of them I can get away with pretty decently as a blush. And these do pounce over a set foundation pretty decent as well with a brush like that BK Beauty one. Um, if I use more dense brush like the half caked brushes over set foundation, those are just a little bit too dense. I need something a little bit more airy to do that over a set foundation. But these are the sticks right here. So this one here is Pop Star. This is what the packaging looks like. So here's Pop Star. And this is just more of a blushy shade on me. And then the other shade is Love Stoned, which is like a golden bronze color, which this is too deep for me and it's not really a blushy tone. So it would work, uh, work better on a deeper skin tone. So that one right there is Love Stoned. And these ones aren't like as tacky as the uh, products that were in the hearts. They're almost like a Oh, not necessarily a cream to powder. They're just not as tacky as those other products. They, they feel a little bit more uh, silicone-y, if anything. And then lastly, they sent over two of their nine pan eyeshadow palettes. And these are really nice too. There's a total of 0.48 ounces of product. And these are also made in China. And I think that they have got one more eyeshadow palette in the range. But if I were to compare the formulation of these palettes to anything else in my collection, um, to me, they're most similar to the Violet Voss formula. Like when I use them, the performance, the consistency of them really reminded me of the Violet Voss formula. So that's what I would compare them the most to. So this first one is the Perfect Match 9 Pigment Palette. It's a cardboard packaging with a magnetic closure. And I am able to use this standalone because that center shade brightens up pretty decently on the lid and underneath the brow. And then these next ones.
and then this last one. So those are the swatches of the Perfect Match eyeshadow palette. And then lastly is the Pretty Precious palette, which the colors in here were surprising because <laughs> the packaging kind of doesn't match the colors that are inside. It's a very neutral color story and there are just some really pretty shiny colors in here. And again, the formula reminds me a lot of the Violet Boss. Oh. And then these guys. So those are the swatches right there of the pretty precious palette. It's almost standalone. I do find myself wanting to uh, bring in a lighter shimmer shade for the inner corner. But pretty palettes though from Half Caked right there. And a huge thank you to Half Caked for sending me over all of those products. I also got a massive box from Kiss Lashes sent over with just a ton of products. And before I got this package and I hadn't placed my Ulta order yet, I had like three pairs of this holiday collection lashes in my cart. And then I got them in PR, which I'm super excited about. When I was getting ready today, I didn't even think about it. And I popped on a pair of um, Code Orange lashes from Glamlight that I was using, which... Had I been thinking, I would have popped on one of these. But anyway, I want to show you guys all of the um, Meredith Duxbury collaboration lashes here. These are all the, sh the shades together here. Um, over here, we've got Angel Eyes, Drunken Love, and I Fancy You. And then over here, we've got Diva, Disco Groovy, and 4AM. So I just want, so I've trimmed them because you guys can see that I've uh, tried them on. But I find it helpful when you can see them all together like that. Or is it just me? <laughs> so those are the uh, Meredith Duxbury collection. Oh, there's another one. These are the all-nighter ones. I actually wore these ones. When I trim them down, I find them to be quite similar um, with that flare to the Code Orange. Maybe a little bit more tame than the Code Orange, but those ones are the all-nighter right there. And then there's a four pack of the Ruffle Lashes, which I have purchased before and have worn before. These are kind of a really easy to wear daily lash for me, even though they're quite long. <laughs> um, and then there's the Volume Full Set right here, which I've worn a pair of those up on top. Trim them down, kind of, I like to, like three quarter, or no, two, two thirds lash is kind of what I do with my eyelashes. And then they sent over this lash mapping kit which this looks really fun. There's And these are long too. Um, long bunches of eyelashes that you can put on the outer corner, which I think I really like to use those because if I, I really like to flare my eyelash out, how much fun would those ones be on the outside? And there's also um, a couple tools in there and then a light and a dark lash glue. There's also a four pack of the baby doll lashes. These are also really easy for me to wear. Um, just kind of to pop on for daily wears, even though they look quite voluminous for me, they're like a daily wearer. <laughs> and then there were a bunch of these um, press on nails, which I've never tried any of these before. And I would like to, but like, I don't know if I can do it. Like, I feel like I would mess up or something. I would love to know you guys' opinion on these. Like, are they easy? Like if I were to go the extra mile to put them on, would they last a long time on? You know, but look at how fun these are for the holidays these sets. I think probably, um, I like the sparkly shorter kind of ones. So maybe this particular pair are a bit uh, fancy for me. There are some big kind of crystals on those ones. Um, but look at how pretty these ones are. I would love to know your opinion on these if you've tried them because I've, I've not. And I feel like it would take me a decent amount of time to put them on. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll go the extra mile for like Christmas or something. Look at these. <laughs> They're so cute. Oh, there were also these holiday ones in there too. There's a little gingerbread man on one of them. 
very, very cute like holiday ones. And then there were also the Super Strong Lash Adhesive um, Applicator, which these type of style of glues are my favorite. When you have got the wand, you can just paint it on. That's just the easiest thing. And then um, a black in the tube, which I do prefer the paint on instead of the tube, um, but I do like the Kiss Lash Glue. And then there was also this Lash Purify Makes False, false Lashes Like New Eye Makeup Remover and Lash Cleanser. So I did try this and there are quite a few oils in it so when I had put it on the eyelashes it did help get the stuff off and break down the glue and stuff like that and then but you have to like use a soap to wash the eyelashes afterwards because otherwise they'll feel kind of like oily um but I found that it did break down the glue and made it kind of you know tacky to like how do you say um it came off but it also like broke down the band a little bit I've only tried it once, but it's the lashes that I have on today that I had used it on to kind of clean them up and try out this product. And when I was picking off the glue, it loosened up like the, the band on the eyelash and one string came off of each lash. There's like one string hanging on. These lashes are on their last leg. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sure about this particular product. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more like alcohol-based to kind of get it off, but um, it's not. It's more like oil-based uh, lash purifier. And then lastly in the box were two pairs of the Sister Nature Vegan Mink Lashes. Fluffy 3D look, they're Storm and Ivy. And I have not tried these ones on yet, but I have purchased lashes uh, from this range from Kiss before. And these two, same thing. These type of lashes are just really easy daily wears for me. And these feel really light, light on the eyes. So those were in there as well. And just like a huge thank you to Kiss Lashes for sending over that massive box of stuff. And then lastly, I got a package from the House of Siage and they came out with some more um, candles from their signature collection. Uh, Benevolence is one that I've been burning constantly and I'm very tempted. I was hoping that that one would go on sale so I could get a couple more. Um, the uh, Wonder Woman candle, I've got, you guys, I have a cart full of House of Siage stuff. It's another one of those things where I filled it up and I just haven't purchased yet because <laughs> they're having really good sales. Anyway, they sent over the candle in Passion de l'Amour right here. I still have it in the uh, cellophane yet. And then they also sent over their Passion de l'Amour Blanche Absolute Travel Spray. It's white enamel with white gold. So um, their perfumes are 30% perfume oil. So you, you need very few spritzes and it lasts really, really well. Um, this particular scent is is really strong for me. Um, it's not one that I can just spray on. I have to be very strategic about it. And I like this better when I mix it with a sweeter fragrance. It's a bit too much for me otherwise. But um, they did send over this with one of their beautiful travel sprays. So it's got the Swarovski crystals and it's enameled. They've got such a lovely weight to them. I actually travel with these when I go places and fill, put a travel spray inside of them and they're really handy to travel with. I did put, um, when I went, last month I put in the Mickey Mouse one and I was gone for like 10 days and one of those travel sprays I still had about that much in the bottom of it so it lasted a, a decent amount of time and I still have some left in the bottle. This is what they just pop right in there like that and the House of Siage makes such beautiful products but yeah this one's really strong uh scent for me it almost for whatever reason I don't know what the deal is it reminds me of walking into a church that's what it reminds me of. So anyway, that this is one of their signature uh, scents is the Passion de l'Amour. Um, but uh, one of my favorites from their signature range, I really like Tiara, um, but I love, love Benevolence and I love Chevador as well. So I sent over this really lovely uh, travel set with the Passion de l'Amour in there. And just an absolute huge thank you as always to the House of Siage for sending those over. And that's everything that I have for my haul today. I thought this was, was gonna be a little bit shorter, but I think it's gonna be, when I edit, it's gonna be a little bit longer than I had anticipated. But anyway, that's everything that I have for my haul today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I will see you guys later. Bye.